Welcome back to the channel. My name is Vanessa and in this video we're going to talk about all the issues that I ran into when I was editing the slow motion footage of the new Sony a7S 3 Things like jittery playback or proxies being created in the wrong frame rates, footage that is being interpreted wrongly, you import horizontal video and it's displayed as vertical video, LUTs that are not shown when exported in media encoder and media encoder failing totally. There's really a lot to talk about. We're going to have chapters in the description below Below. So if you're just interested on a specific topic, you can just jump to the chapter and you don't have to watch the whole video. But before we continue, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So let's dive right into it. We're going to start with the Sony 4K 100 frames per second S-Log3 footage. Once you imported your files, you just do a right click and then select proxies, create proxy. You've got the choice between QuickTime and H.264. In QuickTime, you've got the different file types as well. I'm going to choose H.264 because I'm on a PC. So I'll just choose medium resolution and hit OK. And then media encoder will open and automatically start to create your proxies. So now the creating proxy process is finished. If you go to the project panel, you can actually see that the proxy is being attached in the metadata, the video metadata display, where the destination is and what the file name is. And this is the really interesting part. Now Premiere has automatically created the proxy for the 100 frames per second slow motion footage. Watch what's gonna happen. So when I play back the footage and I stop the footage, you can see their time jumps. So every time you play and you stop, play and you stop, it jumps in time. So it just freaks out completely. And the reason why it's jumping back and forth between the, the different times is because the proxy file is being created with a 60 frames per second frame rate and not 100 like the original file is. Premiere only has these two different presets, the H.264 and the QuickTime for creating proxies. And you're limited with the H.264 to 60 frames per second. So you cannot go any higher. So if you have footage that is 100, 120, 200, 240 frames per second, there is no chance for Premiere to actually create a proxy. So what you have to do is you're going to have to create your own presets that can generate 100 frames per second proxy files. And by the way, I can show you that the file that is created by Premiere is 60 frames per second. I'm just going to drag and drop it into Premiere. And then here you can see at the frame rate, it's 60 frames per second and the original file is 100 frames per second. Okay, so to create the proper presets, you're going to have to go and open up Media Encoder. And there are two things you need to know. You're going to have to create an ingest preset and an encoding preset. First of all, you're going to create the encoding preset, which has all the file formats and all the frame rates and everything else. And then you're going to create the ingest preset, which you're going to have to import in Premiere itself to say there's not only H.264 and QuickTime, but we're going to have H.265 as well using the specific encoding preset. Click the plus sign and create encoder preset. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a title. Then we're going to choose H.265 basic video settings, width and height. I do not want it to match the source. So I'm actually going to say 720p. And then the rest I just leave as it is. Bitrate 7, quality good, rest is fine. And I'll just hit OK. And it's going to create the new preset. And the next one is the ingest preset. Same way, just hit the plus sign or wherever you want create ingest preset. I'll just use the same name and change this to ingest. So I know this is going to be the ingest preset that's going to use the encoder preset that we just created. The next steps are pretty simple. Just choose transcode files to destination. It doesn't really matter what is written here. You can choose whatever you want. When you create the proxies, it's going to ask you where the proxies should be created to. Format, same H.265. And here we're going to choose the preset that we just created, which is the second one here. And that's it. And then you hit OK. Now, Premiere doesn't know that it needs to use that ingest preset to create the proxies. So you're going to have to go into Premiere and tell Premiere to use this preset. For this, you're going to have to right click and export the preset. Once we get back into Premiere, we can right click, proxy, create proxy, and then add ingest preset. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back to where you saved your, the ingest proxy preset, choose it, 
And now you've got H.265 and the preset for it. I always save the proxies right beside the original file. It will just create a proxy folder and it will just dump everything in there. So now if we hit OK, it's going to create the proxy jobs, open media encoder, and you don't have to do anything at all. Just lean back, wait until the proxy is created, and then we're going to check if it's actually 100 frames per second. So back into Premiere, it has created the proxy. It is attached. So now we can play back. Every time I hit play back and stop, it actually stops where it should stop. Now it's all done. We created our proxy and we want to actually edit our 100 frames per second slow motion footage. So when you're working with 100 frames per second footage in a 25 frames per second timeline, you're going to have to slow it down four times to get the nice slow motion effect. If I play it back, you can see it's 100 frames per second, but it's not definitely not slow motion. So there are many different ways how you can slow down the footage. The first one is you can manually slow down the footage in the timeline. So you can do right click and say speed and duration and you choose 25%, hit OK. And now when we play back, it's nice slow motion. But the downside to this is every time you drop the clip into the timeline, it's going to be 100 frames per second. So you're always going to manually have to choose speed and duration 25% with every clip that you're gonna use. And another common way how to slow down the footage, which is actually a mistake, is to interpret the footage. For this, you just do a right click on your clip, modify, interpret footage, assume this frame rate is 25 frames per second and not 100. And then it will change the frame rate to 25 frames per second. So once you add this to your timeline, now watch what's going to happen when I play back the footage. I'm playing back and I stop, play back, stop, works fine. And now suddenly the clip stops, just stops. So this is definitely not the way how to slow down your slow motion footage. You're going to have a nightmare editing like that. Now I'm going to tell you how to slow down your footage the right way. You go back into your project window, you right click on the footage and then you go to speed and duration. Here you choose 25%. So now it's slowed down like the master clip. And every time you drag and drop the clip into your timeline, no matter where you are in your project, it's going to be slowed down. Up above in the project window, you can see in the details 25% speed. So that's the right way how to do it. So that's basically how to create proxies for 100 frames per second footage or 120 or 200, doesn't really matter. And by the way, we added a link in the description below where you can download all of our presets that we created for horizontal and vertical video. And on the side note, a little important information, when you update Premiere to a new version like 2020, 2021, whatever they're going to bring out next, Premiere and Encoder don't always bring your presets into the new version. So you're gonna have to do that manually. I'm on a PC system, so I wrote in the description below the location where you can find the ingest and the encode presets. If you're on a Mac, just do a quick Google search and you'll find the corresponding file location. So once you find the files of the previous version, just copy them to the current version restart Premiere and Media Encoder and you're good to go. I know this is a lot for one video, but at least you will have one video that explains it all, hopefully. So I ran into quite a lot of issues with the new Sony A7S III. When you create proxies for slow motion vertical video, it might be displayed squashed. So I've imported this Sony 4K slow and quick mode 100 frames per second footage, which is a vertical video. In this case, you don't even need to create a new sequence because it's 25 frames per second, the base frame rate. So you can just drag and drop it into your timeline. Now, if you create a proxy for this file in 1080 instead of 720, this is how it looks like when you play it back at one fourth of the resolution. Play it back and it's squashed. I have no idea why Premiere does that. You stop and then it's the original size again. When you go to one eighth of the resolution, it plays back fine. So that's a workaround if you want. If you go to one half, it's squashed again. And if you go to full, it plays back fine as well. So for me, the solution was not to create the proxy in full HD, just in 720. Now you can scroll through all resolutions and your playback will be fine. So if you run into this problem, these are the two solutions. You can either export the proxy as 720 or you can just choose 1 8 or full resolution 
and you'll be fine. And when we're talking about vertical video, there's another strange issue that I ran into, but this is actually not a Premiere problem. This seems to be a Sony problem. And the issue that you run into is when you are filming with a Sony camera and you're filming vertically and you do like a transition movement for B-roll or whatever, the Sony camera seems to save the orientation of the camera into the metadata of the file. What I like to do in Premiere is I like to differentiate between the right vertical video and the wrong vertical video. The way I do this, I just, just label it differently. So I just say orange is all the vertical videos which are actually horizontal videos. So once you labeled it, you can create your new timeline, new sequence. I'm gonna choose 4K 16 by nine. We want to keep the existing settings. And now you can already see the black bars on the sides because this footage is vertical. You could just go into the effects and control panel and change the orientation. When you drag and drop the same file into the timeline like, multiple times, you're gonna have to re-rotate every file manually. My preferred way of doing it, it's just my opinion, is to double click on your file, so it opens a source file, go into effect controls. Here you cannot change the rotation, but you're in the master clip of that file. And then you can go over to effects, type in transform, add it to the effects control tab, go to rotation, 90 degrees. And now every time you drag and drop in that file to the timeline, it's automatically rotated. And also it's important to note that when you create the proxy files for these false vertical videos, they are really vertical videos. So you do have to choose a vertical proxy preset to create the correct proxy and it's gonna rotate the proxy accordingly, of course. Now you created your project, you have all your slow motion footage, you've got your speed ramping, you've got your LUTs, you've got your lumetri effects, you've got your transitions, you've got whatever you have and drag and drop your timeline into Media Encoder and hit export and it should render. But at the moment, it's hell, it's frustrating. I'm having issues with dynamic link. If you check the bug page of Premiere and Encoder, there's a lot of people that have the same issue. My workaround is actually not in Media Encoder itself, it's in Premiere. So let's say this is the project you want to export and don't know, you just have a bit of color correction on whatever, it doesn't matter. You go to File, Export and Media. It opens up your export settings. It's the same as in Adobe Media Encoder. It's no difference. So what you're gonna choose is the H.265. So you come down to your basic video settings. You can leave it in 4K if you're exporting in 4K or just change it to HD. I'm gonna leave it in 4K right now. You scroll down to the encoding settings. Profile is main, just leave it there. Level 5.0. And the tier you change to high. And then you scroll down a bit further. Quality good, target bit rate, whatever, 22 if you want. And you're good to go. You can save the preset if you want. And exporting it with these settings works nine out of 10 times for me. I am not sure if it's because of the H.265 can handle higher frame rates and the H.264 can't. If I were to change it to H.264, you can see that the maximum frame rate is 60. The H.265 can handle up to 300 frames per second. This seems to be the solution that works best. And the last thing we're gonna talk about in this monster video is if you specifically added a LUT to your clip and it's not exported, it's just one click away of being exported correctly. You choose the sequence you want to export. This one has a LUT applied. So if you turn it on and off, you can see the LUT is applied. It's nice and colorful. And now when you drag and drop this into Adobe Media Encoder, choose the preset you want, hit render. The LUT is not applied. You see the difference? In color, it's not applied. So the reason for this is you just have to uncheck one little box. You go to Edit Preferences, Import Sequence Natively. Just uncheck that box and that's all you need to do. Now you can just re-import the sequence into Media Encoder and if you hit Render, it's nice and colorful and the LUT is actually applied. It's that simple. 
So that was it. It was a long video, I know. I hope you liked it and it was helpful to you. If it was, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the presets in the link below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Safe filming and I will hopefully see you in the next video.